Westerns are a genre they don't make enough games about in my opinion, and I've spent close to a thousand hours on Red Dead Redemption 2 online, bounty hunting and selling goods to help build up my posse. Nothing beats the freedom of riding through an open world on horseback, taking in the sights and taking down the bad guys. So I was very keen to dive into the world of Guns and Spurs 2, a mobile game that was developed by a lone ranger at Frozen Lake Game Studio. What's Guns and Spurs 2 on the Nintendo Switch like? Let's grab our duster coats, saddle up, and find out. Guns and Spurs 2 sees you step into the boots of Jack Lane, a bounty hunter looking to clean up the Old West. After a short tutorial, you are dropped straight into the world to hunt criminals, horse race, deliver goods, and help NPCs who tend to lose their wallets. A lot. The game itself has somewhat of a following on the mobile platform and is widely received well as a free-to-play western. Unfortunately for Switch gamers, Guns and Spurs 2 hasn't made a smooth transition over to the Nintendo platform. So let's break down the good, the bad, and the ugly. The good. The game has an interesting overarching mission structure, seeing you hunt down bounties before taking on a boss bounty, which concludes in a duel. There are a lot of weapons you can upgrade that have varying fire rates and ranges, allowing you to try and take out enemies from further away or blast them up close with a powerful shotgun. There are also horseshoes hidden around the world to collect and curse skulls to destroy, which is a fun distraction while exploring the map. The gameplay loop when the game works is enjoyable, despite some of the jank you encounter. I pressed on through the frontier to see how high up the chain of bandits I could get, because when it works, it's okay. And when it doesn't, it's downright frustrating. The bad. Unfortunately, your time in the West will be marred by technical issues. Entering doors for some reason makes your character face the wrong way when you get into the room, which means sometimes you exit the building straight away. It boots you right out. Summoning your horse can make it zip right past your head at the speed of light and appear behind you. And at times your horse will be unable to navigate terrain that it should be able to. On one occasion, I couldn't select any weapons, so I just stood there and got shot to death. And enemy respawns are overly aggressive, giving you maybe 30 seconds to move on before more enemies just start aimlessly running towards you while shooting. There's also no real hit detection, so fighting bandits means shooting each one roughly 5 times until they drop, while side strafing to avoid their fire. The Ugly if the technical issues weren't enough, the game engine looks somewhat similar to the GTA Trilogy remaster, with a low poly PS2 feel coupled with modern shaders. The world geometry pops in and warps, animations are clunky, and the protagonist holds his revolver like a long gun and reloads it like a semi-automatic. The guns all sound the same and firing animations as well as hitting enemies lack any real impact. The world is largely bland and towns lack distinguishing features, making your romp through the west a desolate and lonely experience. There's also a wanted system that looks identical to Red Dead Redemption's, but when I gained a wanted level, I just stood in the middle of town as it wore off with zero repercussions. To me, what really kills Guns and Spurs 2 is the premium price point of 45 Australian dollars, putting it, at the time of writing this review, in the same price bracket as the AAA Red Dead Redemption. Had the game been just a fistful of dollars, I think a lot of the aforementioned issues may be overlooked or be able to be dismissed with the expectations of, you get what you pay for, and sometimes, a game similar to Guns and Spurs 2 that's 3 to $5 would still be an enjoyable distraction to get you through the weekend, but at a AAA price point on Switch, while it's also free on mobile, feels like we may have been offered a bottle of snake oil. Guns and Spurs 2 is a commendable effort considering it was developed by a one-man team, but unfortunately it's marred by technical issues, it's most definitely placed in the wrong price bracket to justify the purchase. While I'm looking forward to seeing what Frozen Lake Game Studio comes up with next, I would recommend that cowboys and cowgirls sit in the saloon and wait this one out. While I was certainly hoping for Guns and Spurs 2 to be a resounding yee-haw, unfortunately for me, it's a yeah nah. So. What's it like? Guns and Spurs 2 is like a mobile version of Red Dead Redemption if it was made in the pre-patched GTA Trilogy engine. I award it a 34 out of 100. 
A review copy was provided by the publisher, which I'm grateful for, but this does not affect the outcome of my review.